Here's a nice geometry problem. A circle is drawn through the vertices A, B, and C of triangle ABC, as we can see here. So this is a circle which circumscribes the triangle. It passes through all of the triangle's vertices. As we can see, AB has length 5, B7 has length 7, and AC has length 10. Just from knowing the sides of this triangle, which is circumscribed, by the circle, we want to find the radius of the circle. To solve this problem and find the radius of the circle using just this triangle, we're going to need Heron's formula for the area of a triangle. That says that the area of a triangle is equal to the square root of the semi-perimeter, S, multiplied by S minus A, S minus B, and S minus C, where A, B, and C are just the sides of the triangle. We're also going to need the extended law of sines, which relates the sine function to the radius of the circumcircle. You can see that A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. That's the typical law of sines. The extended law of sines also tells us this is equal to 2 times the radius of the circle. With those hints, you can give the problem a try yourself. Let's get into the solution. First, let's take this last part of the extended law of sines, c over sine c equals 2r, and let's just solve that for r, because remember the end goal here is to find r, the radius of the circumcircle, so let's just go ahead and solve that for r. That's going to give us this, that r equals c over 2 sine c, just dividing both sides of that equation by 2. I should mention as well, we're using the letters here in the conventional way. Uppercase letters refer to the angle of the triangle, and the lowercase letters, like lowercase c here, refers to the side opposite the respective angle. So little c is this side opposite the angle c. So we can see that to find the radius we're looking for, we just need to find sine c. That's the only thing here that we don't know, the sine of that angle. Now, sine of this angle is actually going to tell us about the height of this triangle. So we can use that to create an expression for the area. And then we can find what the area actually is using Heron's formula, and in that way we'll be able to solve for sine c. So let's start. Here is our triangle that I've just taken out of the circle and duplicated here so we can look at it with a little bit more detail. The height of this triangle, if we consider this side here to be the base, if this is the base, then this perpendicular distance to the opposite vertex is the height. Then, what is sine of c? Well, in the context of this right triangle, which contains the height of ABC, sine of c would be the opposite side, the height segment, divided by the hypotenuse, which we know to be 10. That's sine of c. This, of course, means that the height of the triangle is 10 sine c, and thus we can find the area in terms of sine. The area of triangle ABC is 1 half base times height. The base is this side here, and since that's the side opposite the vertex A, we're going to say that this side has length little a. So it's 1 half base times h, the height, and the height we know is 10 times sine c. So this is just 1 half times that side length of a, which is 7, multiplied by 10 sine c, which is the height. Thus, what is sine c? Well, we can just solve this equation for sine c, and what we're going to get is that, well, 7 times 10 is 70, multiplied by a half is 35, so just divide both sides by 35, and sine c is the area of the triangle divided by 35. All right, we're almost there because remember, we're looking for the radius of the circumcircle. And in order to find that radius, we just need to find sine c. Here we've got sine c, 
but we've written it in terms of the area of the triangle. So now all we have to do is find the area of the triangle using Heron's formula, which we can do because we know every side of the triangle. Heron's formula, remember, requires the semi-perimeter S, so let's go ahead and calculate the semi-perimeter of our triangle. That's just half the perimeter. So five plus seven plus 10 divided by two. 5 plus 7 plus 10 is 22, divided by 2 is 11. So that's the semi-perimeter. And then applying Heron's formula gives us this. The area of the triangle is going to be the square root of the semi-perimeter, 11, multiplied by the semi-perimeter minus one side, multiplied by the semi-perimeter minus another side, and so on. So it's the square root of 11 times 6 times 4 times 1. 6 times 4 is 24, times 11 is 264. We can take a 4 out of that and then take the square root, and thus taking the square root of 4 out of the radical, this is our simplified expression, 2 times the square root of 66. That's the area. With this, we can come back to our sine c equation. Sine c is the area of the triangle divided by 35. But now we know the area of the triangle is 2 root 66. So this is 2 root 66 divided by 35. Now this is sine c, so we can replace sine c in this equation and finally solve for the radius r of the circumcircle. And here that is. The numerator, little c, is the size length opposite angle C, and we know that is 5. In the denominator, we have 2 times sine C, so there's the 2, and then sine C we know is 2 root 66 over 35. Now let's just go ahead and simplify this expression. 2 times 2 is just 4, and we are dividing 5 by this fraction. That's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal, so this is going to be 5 multiplied by 35 over 4 times the square root of 66. There's not much more simplification we can do with this, but we can rationalize the denominator and combine the 5 and the 35. So multiplying the numerator and denominator by root 66 in order to rationalize, we're going to have 5 times 35, which is 175, multiplied by the square root of 66. And then in the denominator, the square root will be canceled out, so we'll just have 66 times 4, which is 264. And these guys have no common factors, so that is our final answer for R, the radius of the circumcircle. It's 175 root 66 divided by 264. So there's a pretty cool problem, using some geometry and trigonometry in order to find the radius of a circle just from the side lengths of an inscribed triangle. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or your own solution to this problem, and you can check out more interesting math problems in my playlist. Link in the description. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind, two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments, the union in together like any time that we Intersect cause my opponent